Wow, the moment I cut the video, we have migrations, uh, migrants rather, arrive. Uh, so yeah, more Dwarf Fortress again. Uh, and this time we can deal with a nice wave of migrants, which I very much enjoy. Let's see, and hopefully we have a good amount. We have seven, that's a great amount. Uh, so let's see who we have. We have, first of all, a Butcher, I see. A Butcher, and as well as that, he's also, a, he has a few military skills. Uh, we're not going to worry about that. I'm going to make him my dedicated Butcher slash Tanner. As well as that way, you have a Boya. He makes bows and stuff. Wow, he's actually quite a skilled military man. If you look here, he has Spear Dwarf, Shield User, Armor User, Observer, Dodger, Fighter, all very good skills. So in fact, I'm gonna make this guy my military. Uh, so I'm gonna go into military once again, try and make a barracks a little bit soon. Uh, so we have a Record Keeper. This guy could be a Record Keeper, I'll be fine. We've got a Miller as well. It's something not huge useful in animal training. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and make him a Mason. Actually, no, I'm gonna make this guy my mechanic. Because uh, I would kind of prefer dedicated mechanics, that's fine. We also have an accomplished brewer, that's great. So now I can have a dedicated brewer. And I think I missed a dwarf. Metal crafter. Hmm. Not something hugely useful for us, uh, but we're going to leave it be. Uh, and yeah, decent uh, decent in all the woodworking skills, so I'm going to leave that be. So quite a good uh, migration with uh, a lot better than some of the things that I've had before anyways. Uh, at the minute I need to just stop this for now just so I can make sure that my dwarves can actually get in. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and make my military. Again, I'm sure you've saw this menu before. I've gone over each of these in my advanced tutorial, but I will be going over them again. So I'll go over them right now. So first menu, this is where you make uh, squads and stuff. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and make me the squad leader because I am the most well trained. Uh, but one thing to note is the fact that a wild dwarf therapist can detect dwarves that aren't on the map. To add people to military, uh, they've, they've, they've actually got to be on the map. Because, you know, my, when migrants come, they slowly leak on the map. They don't all instantly come. Uh, so now we should be able to add that other nice man to our military. Novice fighter, was this him? Adam? Or was it Dumed? Oh, it's Dumed. Uh, yeah, so as you can see, we go up a little bit and it shows you the most... Uh, most relevant skill. So competent spear, spear dwarf is quite a relevant skill, uh, quite a good skill. So I can go ahead and make him on military. So we'll be able to make a barracks and I'll show you how to train them in there. Uh, but I'm just gonna go through the other menus. Alerts. Uh, this is kind of a hard to describe menu, but this is basically different types of civilian alerts. Uh, it also involves burrows. Uh, I don't really want to go over burrows again, but I will go over burrows again right now. So basically, uh, say for example, goblins are invading you know you only want your military to actually be outside fighting so what you can do is you can use this fun thing called burrows so a new menu w for burrows so i can press a to add new burrow i can press d to delete uh, i can change my selection or you know, i can have multiple then i use plus and minus to change i'm just gonna go ahead and remove these other two uh i can make it so uh well, first of all, before I go anywhere else, I'm going to go ahead and define the burrow. As you can see, N has defined this burrow. So I'm going to press N at one end and enter at the other. There's also lots of other different ways you can paint it. You can paint over tile, or I can paint it like this. Uh, you can send on the burrow, lots of different stuff. Uh, you can also change how it looks, but that's not something huge, and I'm not going to bother explaining that. You can do that yourself, uh, because it's something that isn't essential at all. So we're going to go ahead and press escape, go back in this menu, and now we can define this uh, burrow again. We can add citizens to the burrow. Adding citizens basically makes it specific. Uh, you can make it so only specific burrows, uh, only specific civilians are restricted to it. So if, say, for example, if I want a dwarf only to live underground and only to farm, I can make a burrow consist of his bedroom, his uh the farm uh, a food stockpile so he can eat basically the essentials for a dwarf and he can just live down there so as you can see we can add specifics we can have multiple people only one person we can add nobody uh but outside of that uh one way as i said to keep your civilians out of combat oh god one thing actually i missed here i didn't do it straight away so i don't remember, so i don't forget one of my men has got trapped in here i'm not quite sure how but i need to remove that wall uh which is why he's hungry uh, so what else do I need to do? That's also why my mining's going, going quite small, uh, slow. So yeah, so if you go into the military menu, go to alerts, we can add a new alert. We're gonna call this panic. This is what I normally call it. Uh, so panic, or as you can see, inactive. This means that they have no orders, so they won't be training. Active slash training, there's nothing apart from this is active, so they they will be training. In panic, I can define my own things, you know. But in this, 
as you can see, if I go over burrow, I can restrict civilians to this burrow. So when I do this, my, bur my civilians will all rush to the burrow. They will be restricted to it. As you can see, if I do it right now. Did I do it? No. So I need to press enter on panic. And then all of a sudden, I'll get lots of messages saying that it's forbidden area. And now they're all rushing to the burrow. So this is a really good way. So now they will all stay in here and they will still perform jobs, but only if it's in that area. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that right now. So that's a useful use of, uh, of alerts. There is a little bit more depth to it. You can give different orders with schedule, but I'm not going to go into that because it's a very advanced and it's something that I personally don't find very useful. I prefer the simplistic things. Obviously, you can experiment in your own with uh, different things. Uh, equip menu. As you can see, at the minute, they are ordered to have stuff like... Uh, metal armor all that stuff because when i first made the squad i chose metal armor as an out as a uniform uh so they are automatically assigned to have all this metal armor means you know they'll look for their own metal armor and then give themselves something but as well as that you can't assign them specific weapons if you want to or specific pieces of armor by using these so say for example i don't want him to use his own choice of melee i can press capital and uh, capital w uh, and then i can give him a specific weapon such as you know any of these uh and uh, these are listed because I presume there's a civilization on the ground which has them. I don't actually own them, but they're on the map, which is why it's letting me choose them. Uh, it's kind of a bug, not really though. Uh, so yeah, that's one way of doing things. As well as that, you can change uniforms. I can give, I can add uniforms. You know, I can make it so I could add a new uniform that only makes them wear cloaks or something. Uh, but I won't bother because it's kind of pointless. Uh, supplies is basically what they carry around with them. They use backpacks uh, to carry around food and they use flasks, I believe, uh, to carry around alcohol. Uh, this basically, you know, if they've got food and what of them, they can last a little bit longer. You know, if they're out on a long, uh, a long run around in caverns for training, uh, they don't have to come back to get food and stuff. It'll make them a bit happier. So that's one thing you can do, you can increase and decrease the amount of uh, food and water that they bring them. Ammunition, basically I can assign ammunition. This is Creative Cause is the uh, randomly assigned name to uh, my squad at the minute. Uh, so you know, I could add, I could add some, I could uh, allow them to have some arrows, but I'm not going to. So they don't need arrows, because none of them are archers, so that's fine. And Schedule is a scary menu, which is why people hate military. It's very big and it's very complicated. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave that be because it's scary. It's something you can look into uh, on your own because it's not something very essential, but you can make them do stuff like protect burrows at specific times, make them patrol specific areas when, you know, like traders are coming, stuff like that. A lot of uh, different things that you can do with that, but that's for very advanced users. And like I said, that's one of the reasons people uh, have, have the impression that it's impossibly hard to do that. But that's only because of you know it is it makes it look impossibly hard because of that uh, so i can go ahead and check our progress so it looks like our stockpiles are finished so i'm gonna go ahead and set everything to dump and go ahead and reclaim the area uh, and let's see is our mechanic done yes it is so i'm going to go ahead and make a few rock mechanics uh, to make our floodgate which is the next thing i'm going to cover on how to irrigate ground air uh, which is stone to cover to uh, irrigate the ground there we are going to need three mechanics. One mechanic for a lever and two mechanics to connect uh, connect the lever to the floodgate so we can operate uh, remotely. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and make the uh, make the lever somewhere safe. Because say for example if I open it, if I leave the lever there, if there's water flushing out of here, then you know nobody can touch the lever because it's dangerous terrain. That's what I'll say. So I'm going to go ahead and make the lever over here. So we do have four mechanics. So my mechanic should come down here and use a mechanic on that very shortly. And then I can connect it and I can show you exactly how you irrigate. So once you've done this, you have a lever. By the way, that's used build, using build, T, and then L. I did cover this in earlier basic videos, but just in case you've forgotten. Uh, so from here, you can add new tasks, link it up to a bridge, a chain, a door, whatever. Uh, loads of different things. But we're gonna use F for floodgates. We're gonna, it's gonna, it would give you multiple selections. You can use plus and minus to select there. Uh, what floodgate you know if i did have multiple floodgates but in this case we're going to use this floodgate uh so i'm going to go ahead and uh, use two mechanics on this so now it's designated to link a building to a trigger so now as soon as this is linked i can open and close it uh, by pulling the lever so our mechanic again will come down and do that as you can see there he is with one mechanic he's going to be finishing this up very soon but remember he is untrained so it will take him a little while and he's going to come down with the other one and now our floodgate is completed 
so we can now op uh, operate with this lever. As you can see, it's now opened. There is no floodgate there anymore. So I'm going to show you how to irrigate this now. Uh, this room's almost clear. Uh, I think I will... No, nah, I won't bother waiting until it's clear. So basically, once you've done this, I know this is scary. You know, you're penetrating the river, which can kill everybody, but it won't kill everybody, don't worry. Because we have a floodgate, which completely stops water. And no kind of pressure can break it. It's not like a well where, you know, it's an open area of uh, land. So I can go ahead and close this now. So I'm designated dwarf to pull it. And now it's closed. As you can see, the water's still spreading though. And it's still irrigating the ground. And now, you know, it's completely gone. So now, if I want to, if I want to get some water, I just need to open this floodgate and it'll start opening straight away. So I'm just going to go ahead and set to pull the lever twice and just quickly show how you can, I can open a little bit more. See? And now it's uh, designated to close again. So somebody will come and close it. Okay, go close it. There we go. Okay, it looks like uh, it did flood a little bit over, as you can see. Hello again, I just had a cut right there because I was about to do boring stuff like designate stockpiles. Uh, but yeah, right now we do have our underground area irrigated quite fine, so I'm going to go ahead and go into our farm bit uh, in the next part. But right now, as you can see, migrants have arrived, so I can go ahead and deal with them. So let's see how big is this wave. A wave of two. I'm kind of okay if this is my last wave was quite big, so... I'm not so fussed. So we do have a kind of decent guy at, uh, at combat again, but uh, he's also a spinner, not something I'm really interested in, so I'm going to go ahead and remove that, and he's going to be another mason slash stone detailer, something a little bit more useful. So as well as that, we are going to have... Uh, we're going to have this guy, actually. We're going to make him our furnace operator and wood burner, because I do need the wood burner to start our coal uh, production, and then iron production, and then pig iron production, and then steel production. Uh, so we're going to get there in time. So I'm going to go ahead and probably show you that in the next part. But for now I'm going to go ahead and let my migrants loose into the wild. So they should be able to get into my nice little fort soon. As you can see, if you look downstairs, everywhere is nice and cleared out. And like I said, I did designate some stockpiles. So I'm going to go ahead and make my bedrooms. Uh, I'm going to cut the video, make the bedrooms. Uh, and in the next part, I'm going to again make our nice farm after our ground is irrigated. Uh, and as well as that, we're going to start. I'm going to start showing you how to uh, produce stuff like steel uh, and iron. Probably not an entire depth because I don't really... Uh, have the materials for it at the minute uh, but for now it's entirely fine uh, thank you very much for watching again as i said in the last two or so parts if you want to become a dwarf feel free to put uh, a comment in the video and i'll do it uh, like the video if you liked it dislike it if you uh, didn't like it any creative criticism or feedback is much appreciated anything that you'd want to be covered uh within reason like i, I don't really want to cover something like uh, i don't know something impossible uh, but yeah, anything within reason that you want to be covered, uh, I'll be more than happy to do it. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and hopefully see you in the next video.